Hello, it's Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. It's not so much of a pen review today, but more of a um, sort of how-to video. Basically, what it is, um, it's quite straightforward. The Noodle is Ahab, very affordable, modern, flex nib fountain pen. Same applies for certain other Noodler's models, including the uh, uh, Nib Creeper, Noodler's Nib Creeper. Um, as it happens for this video, I'm just purely going to concentrate on the Noodler's Ahab and the problems that I have experienced with this pen um, and how to fix them. And it's a quite a simple fix, which I completely overlooked as a fountain pen beginner and also even when I was trying to get this thing to write, or any of these pens to write, um, it was it was not obvious. So I'm going to go through the uh, through the problems that uh, I experienced, and also I know that many other people have also experienced problems with the Noodler's uh, Ahab, and pro probably their other pens as well, because we it, it is a consistent issue. And that problem is. They don't write. What happens, or certainly what's happened with all of the Noodle's Ahabs that I've bought, and I do like this pen. I think it's a good design. I like the material, everything else. But as the pen goes, forget about the flex. You know, it didn't write. What happened was, you'd pick up one of these pens, write with it, and it would write one, maybe two sentences, and then stop writing. And it wouldn't it just would not write. You could shake it down into the feed, but it, it, it just wasn't doing anything. It wasn't working. Um, and you could leave the pen for 24 hours and it'd write again. So, you know, what the hell? I mean, seriously, you buy a brand new fountain pen, you kind of expect it to work. You might have to do some nib smoothing, but at the end of the day, you kind of, I mean, you're expecting this thing to write. And it doesn't, or it didn't, or it's inconsistent. And as a result, the Noodler's Ahab has got a very, very mixed reputation. I would say poor, but obviously some people don't have these issues. Um, but I'm going to hazard a guess and say 50% of people who tried the Noodler's Ahab have that had these problems. And as a result, they're going to discount the Noodler's Ahab and probably all of Noodler's fountain pens as being a load of rubbish. Um, I had as well. I mean, I, I purchased several um, of these pens very cheaply in the sale. I believe it was probably from uh, Pure Pens here in the UK um, last year. And yeah, love the pens, love the design, love the colour, but I couldn't get them to write. And what happens is, you know, you write your sentence, it stops writing, it refuses to write. Also, the nibs were dumping down an awful lot of ink. So what was happening is those one or two sentences that I did manage to write would be extremely wet. Forget about any line variation. It was just dumping down a lot of ink and it was taking 30 minutes to dry. Um, so, yeah, really unacceptable performance. Um, so I'm going to cover what I did to fix these problems because my opinion of the Noodle is Ahab has changed massively since I fixed the problems. Now I know you can go online and find out a lot of this stuff but it took me months to find out the solution and the solution was far simpler than what I was led to believe when you read the blog posts where basically people are saying things like you know you need to remove the feed, the black ebonite feed here pull that out and then look at the channels and get a craft knife and carefully score down the channels and maybe cut out extra fins and mess around with all this sort of stuff. And before you do that, follow my advice in this video because you may not even have to bother hacking away at your feed or any other bits of the pen. So watch this video please because it's got some very valuable information as far as I believe. Um... There are also some bits of advice where people are recommending basically pull pull the nib and feed out and slide them in different lengths and try writing with it, see if that works, then slide it down a fraction of a millimetre more, try writing again, see how that goes, come back to the come back to the pen the next day, see how that goes. 
seriously, who's got time for that? You want to be able to get the pen writing. And the steps that I took to get the Noodler's Ahabs that I have writing, and this is just a selection of three of them, um, and the, the simple, basic, if you like, pen maintenance, pen setup, simplest things have got these pens, all of them writing consistently and all of them writing well very easily, very quickly, without hacking away and spending hours messing around trying to get the nib and the feed the right length and everything. So, what I did was, first off, you've got a brand new Noodler's Fountain pen. Unscrew everything, I'm not going to unscrew the barrel, there's no need, but the nib and feed is simply friction fit into the plastic section here. So all you do, finger and thumb, squeeze and pull it straight out. It doesn't require any twisting, don't do anything like that because the, the section is, if you like, um, there is a cut out where the, feet, where the uh, nib goes into the section. So it is quite a specific fit. So don't twist it, just pull it straight out. There shouldn't be a lot of force required to, uh, to pull that out. Take apart your section. What you'll also find is often if you've got the plunger converter, the captive converter that's supplied, in here you'll find a thin plastic straw attached to the feed. It just pushes vaguely into the back. So take that out as well. It's quite, quite straightforward. Basically what you, what you put want, the components are the nib, the ebonite feed, the section and if you've got the clear plastic straw that as well so you've got four things excuse me a minute my dogs are just going to start barking at people walking past there we go that one. all the hallmarks of kicking off right so you've got your four components Get some soapy water, hot soapy water, I'm talking washing up liquid detergent in hot water, and a sponge scourer. Not, don't use the scourer side, just the sponge, you need a washing up sponge. Hot soapy water, plenty of detergent, and basically put the nib, the feed, the section, and the thin plastic straw all into the water. Soak them a bit and get the sponge and really rub, really, really scrub away at these, uh, these components. Because what happened to all of my pens, they were all new, they were supplied with, you know, just as is. And I always flush my pens. All new pens always get flushed with me using detergent and um, uh, dish detergent and water hot water, flushed through several times. And I kept flushing it because I knew that there was potentially a problem with the noodles pens. So every time these things didn't write, I'd dump all the ink, flush it through, clean it, put it back together, still wouldn't write. Big, big problems. So I thought I'd flush these pens. No, that is not flushing a noodles pen. You really do need to remove the nib, the section, the feed, and the plastic straw and give all of them a good scrub in soapy water with just the sponge of a sponge scourer um, and that will remove all of the machining oil that these things are heavily contaminated with I'd flushed my pen several times and it was only when I started to think, well, shall I try this technique, that I discovered that it actually works. So there was an awful lot of machining residue, even though these pens have all been flushed, still on the nib and the feed, certainly. So it all needed cleaning off. Give them a rinse in clean water, just to remove any detergent or any traces of, um, of uh, detergent which has taken the... Um, oils into suspension just get gets all that off in clean water give them a dry and then reinsert them into the pen now when you reinsert them as i discussed 
make sure that the nib is lined up with the cutout at the top of the section. It really is important that you fit it in correctly because if you don't, you're going to jam the thing in there. It's probably going to bend the nib. It might even damage the section and your pen's never going to work. So make sure you line that up carefully. Position the feed where you'd say it's supposed to be, underneath the nib, and push both into the section. Now, another common problem. Pushing the things too far into the section. The nib has got a set place in the section. It will not go any further in. And I don't recommend leaving it any further out. So just push the nib into the section. And the feed just follows it in this sort of position. If you're looking at this. Thinking, yep, yeah, that seems to be about right. Yes, I know. Some videos are going to say, well, if you want more flex, or less flex or more wetness, less wetness, move the nib and feed in and out and mess around with it. This is a standard setup, um, as far as I'm concerned. There are nine fins underneath the feed. You want nine, well, there's more than nine actually, but you want nine fins to be exposed, thereabouts, give it, give or take less than a millimetre. But that is the what I found the standard setup. You want nine fins protruding. And you should have a nib and feed, which looks like that from underneath. So that is what you do to insert it. You shouldn't have to force the thing in. If you're really pushing it in, you're going to use too much pressure and the thing will stick in the fit in the section. So you're going to have to pull the whole thing out, which takes effort and you could damage everything. So be careful. It really does just sort of slide into a certain certain uh, position. So, there is one last step, and this is to, I'm not saying guarantee, but it is pretty much to guarantee that this pen will write and write consistent, consistently with good ink flow. And that is to heat set the nib and feed. Now, it isn't half as scary as you think. Excuse me a minute. It's summer here and everyone's walking their dogs and our dogs don't like it. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, heat setting. All you need to do is once you've assembled your pen and the nib and the feed is all in position, get a kettle, fill a cup or a mug with boiling water, leave it for a second or two, and then simply hold just the nib and the feed, I mean, part of the section you could do, but just the nib and the feed in that cup of, if you like, not boiling, but cooling down boiled water. So really, really hot water. Hold it in there for 30 seconds. As soon as it's had that 30 seconds, the ebonite, which is a hard rubber, will have softened slightly. I'm not talking it's going to be all pliable and malleable, but um, it will have softened. As soon as it's had that 30 seconds, get yourself a tea towel, some sort of dishcloth, something which is going to protect your hands from being burnt because it's hot. And all you do is take it out of the cup of water, towel around your fingers, and basically all you're trying to do is squeeze the nib and the feed together to make contact fairly hard. I would say as hard as possible, but I mean, everyone's mileage may vary. You might have a grip which crushes the thing, but uh, just firm, hard pressure to force the nib in contact with the feed or the feed in contact with the nib and hold it for 20 seconds at least until that rubber ebonite feed has started to reset, re-solidify, and it should be butted completely up against the feed. There's no way of really checking it without using bits of paper, but forget about that, you don't need to know. Um, basically, that's all you need to do. So basic, three steps. First one, take your pen apart, wash your nib, your feed, 
your section and the plastic straw thing um, in really hot soapy water using detergent don't use anything else no other cleaners just dish detergent washing up liquid that type of thing wash them all reinsert your freshly cleaned nib feed and other bits into the pen count when you're inserting the nib and feed insert the nib first hold them together just slide it in and make sure you've got nine fins as a guideline i mean you can play around with it but nine fins visible between the section and, in, and from the feed out of the section nine fins then heat set the nib a cup of boiling water hold it in there 30 seconds take it out squeeze the nib and feed together for 20 seconds and your pen should write I don't want to leave you wanting because I've got three pens here so let's do a little bit of writing which will just demonstrate because these pens really didn't work Okay, so Noodles Ahab, the simple fix. That's all we needed to discuss. So, I mean, these pens, I'll do a quick a couple of sentences so you can see exactly how these pens do now write. So, yeah, pen's keeping up absolutely fine. I mean, previously, when I first bought these pens, brand new, flushed them, this would have stopped writing by now. It also probably would have been burped ink all over the place, and that would be it. That's, uh, that was my impression of the pen. But these things will now write and write and write. So, let's see a little bit of flex. We've got no pressure whatsoever. We've got a extra fine line a little bit more and lots this will now keep up with whatever I'm writing so that's that pen fixed um, if you are interested in knowing what inks I'm using, this particular ink is Waterman's Mysterious Blue. Which I absolutely love. I always have done. Very, very nice ink. The uh, Noodler's Ahab I'm using here is Carnolian Honey. It's a clear demonstrator version. This is the Arizona finish, which is basically a swirled yellow and orange material. Dag dog. There we go. So this ink is uh, Robert Oster uh, Sublime. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lots of shading there with lots and lots of ink. And the third Noodler's Ahab that I have inked up here is the Bumblebee finish, which is basically yellow with black in it. Ah, damn it. <laughs> One problem with the Noodler's, if you give it too much of a shake, it dumps ink everywhere.
And this ink is uh, Krishna. Krishna inks, Vicari. Which I absolutely love in a very weird way because it's a very, very weird colour. Um, it's one of the rather intense sheening inks. Um, it's difficult to say. You could call it orange, but it's more of a pink. Um, I'd, I'd say it's probably a pink sheening green ink. And it's got a hell of a lot of green sheening. Really quite amazing. And it's fantastic in these pens. Sheening inks, really, really good in the uh, Noodlers Ahab. Because you do have the opportunity to not just write, but also in certain contexts, really da lay down an awful lot of ink. So if we just have a quick look at that last writing sample. Showing it's still drying a little bit. But there is a bit of green sheen starting to appear there. So, there we go. You can see these lines down here. Green sheen, really quite pronounced. So, very, very interesting to play around with these pens. They are great fun to use. Um, I would say, if you've ever used a Noodler's Ahab and gone, well, this is a load of rubbish, please rethink your... Have, have, have another go. If you've still got one in your collection, you bought it and chucked it in a drawer and thought, wow, these things are useless, they don't write. Follow my advice in this video. Give it a go, please, and try it out, because you may be really pleasantly surprised. And I absolutely love the Noodler's Ahab now. I thought it was a complete waste of money. I thought, you know, I've bought pens that don't write. I've even uh, got some spare number six nibs. Just buy any old number six nibs from China, wherever, online. Um, and they will fit into these pens. So you can put a non-flex nib in. And that's the actual opportunity. That's what I was actually thinking of doing. Just fit a number six medium nib. You know, at least I've got a pen that looks good and writes. But I was aware of the fact that I'd probably have to heat set the feed, the nib and the feed as well. So it was like, mm, well, I'll do a bit of playing around. I'll see if I can clean it. And of course, when I started taking the pen apart, I realised just how much oil residue there still was on the nibs and the feeds. So that's how I discovered to how to uh, how to fix that problem. Gave it a go and absolutely over the moon with the results. Really, really good to get these pens back. So. Give it a go. It gets a thumbs up from me. Thanks for watching. Bye.